can you just look at me? We're just have a conversation. Tell me a little bit about what does homeless ministry mean to you personally? So, <laughs> um, I didn't know. <clears throat> I didn't know I was homeless when I was a kid because homelessness to me, and I think uh, to society in general, is, is a man with a beard drenched in pee um, sleeping on the sidewalk. And when I got involved with this ministry, I found out that homelessness was something totally different. And then I found out I was homeless uh, when I was a kid. Um, my brother and I were 17 months apart and uh, we, in 12 years, we went to 12 schools. So from first grade to graduating high school, um, we lived in a half a dozen different states, different homes. Um, some were family, some were friends of friends, and some were total strangers. And, uh, you know, this was in the uh, late 70s you know, early 80s, and there wasn't a lot of, of the, I didn't, I didn't see any anyways, a lot of the programs that they had today, and, and there was not a shelter like this shelter. Um, <clears throat> so homelessness to me is uh, not knowing where your next meal is coming from, not knowing if, uh, if it's raining outside, uh, that you're going to be covered uh, at some point. And that's where my brother and I were our whole lives. And um, when, and I didn't even realize this until I became much older as an adult, but uh, we both joined the military um, because we, wanted, we needed a home. You know, we needed a home. So uh, the military is a big security blanket, right? They, you work and they give you a home, they give you food, they take care of you. So, so getting involved with a shelter, I found out that homelessness was something totally different. And then I found out that's, that was me. You know, that was, that was me as a kid. There was, uh, um, boy, I tell you, it, it gives me goosebumps, you know, just thinking about it. My brother and I were put on airplanes and, and you know, we were five, four, five, six, seven years old uh, without any guardians. And we were dropped off at bus stops, uh, airports, sometimes just on the side of the road, you know. And um, uh, I remember uh, my brother and I having these little uh, luggages, these little kid luggages and blankets. And our biological mom at the time, who was in and out of our lives, uh, would drop us off at the curb of a home, just a regular home, and uh, take off from there because she knew, you know, if she walked us to the door, whoever answered the door would be like, I don't think so, you know? So we would walk to the door and then they'd open the door saying, hey, we're, you know, they, you know, and that's how, that's how we had shelter. It was incredible. So being involved in the ministry, um, I always said if I, if, if I had that, even if we slept in the sanctuary or on the floor of pastor's office or somewhere in this building, the difference, even though we wouldn't have like a yard and right and a picket fence and all that, uh, is that we would know. Um, you know, pastor would say, "Hey, Ken, um, I'll see you tomorrow, right?" And sorry. So, uh, so we didn't have that. You know, we didn't. We didn't say, um, you know, you could shower tomorrow or. Or there'll be food on the table in the morning. Right? We didn't. We didn't have that. So um, I remember there was an instance. Uh, it's not just hunger, right? I mean, we we're also uh, f afraid of our for our lives. We were in a bus station in San Francisco. So um, I was in first grade. My brother was in second grade. So we were six and seven years old, and. I just, I just remember a thousand, it just feels like thousands of people like Disney World, right? Just packed. It was a, a bus station in San Francisco in the, in the late 70s. And uh, we were so, so scared. My brother and I were so scared that we found um, the center of the, of the station, 
before they called our bus tickets to go where we weren't sure where we're going. And we sat um, back to back. So he says, Ken, I'll, <sighs> I'll watch your back and you watch my back until they call. Man, it feels like it just happened last night. You know, it's, I could feel it. It just, I remember it, you know. And it, that's how scared we were. We're just little kids. I, uh, my little, my boys. I have a, um, they're just turning five and seven now. And I could not imagine putting them in any city, not even in, in any city in Maine, you know, let alone a huge city with just thousands of people. And, uh, and we had the wherewithal to just say, hey, let's, you know, make sure no one catches us or hurts us or, um, you know, just little kids, right? I mean, that's incredible, you yeah. know. But, uh, but we, you know, by God's grace, we, you know, we survived. And uh, a couple of homeless kids, I did, didn't know they were homeless until later. But uh, so, so homelessness really has, um, it re really, um, it's different for me. It's not just a, you know, a, a dirty old man with, a, with newspapers and, and drenched in urine and has a beard because he hasn't shaved. It's, it's different. It's, uh, it, you know, it's, homelessness is different. It's different because it's personal because that was you. Yes. Can you say that, something like that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's different because I was homeless. You know, it was, it was me. You know, I was, I was the guy that I would walk by that's drenched in urine, has a beard, and he's covered in newspaper. I was that guy. I just didn't look like him, but I was him. And, tell, me, uh, tell me what you said earlier about in a statement, just a brief statement, you know, what you wouldn't give for one ounce of stability. So as I was growing up, and I didn't even know what stability was. You know, I didn't know um, whenever we go to a new school, you know, we, we didn't know any, we didn't have any friends. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have a girlfriend. I, I didn't have a best friend, right? I didn't have a teacher that knew my name. I, you know, it was it was new every single year. Sometimes two, three times a year. So, so I didn't know what stability was. So, as I started um, putting roots down as an adult, you know, I went to college and um, I started spending more time in one location. Um, if 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 I just had one ounce of stability as a child, just one ounce. I, w I wouldn't even ask for, you know, hey, uh, you stayed at the same school district your whole life, right? And you had the same church. I, w I wasn't even asking for that. If I just had an ounce of stability um, where I knew I had a bed that I can go to, that I was gonna, you know, eat at this table the next day or the next morning, you know, w where I would have flourished as a child, you know, instead, my brother and I were just trying to survive, you know, and um, I can't imagine there, there are kids out there that right now they're in the same position and moms and dads and, uh, whew, you know, so um, the stability is when you're a kid and, and you're homeless, uh, there's no stability. And, and, and Pastor Barry and this ministry, um, regardless of the circumstances and whatever we can do, whatever he could do at the time or whatever we can do now as a board or as a church, the ministry, um, we're giving people stability. It may not be ideal, you know, but it's stable. And when I was a kid, I wasn't looking for ideal. I was just looking for stable, something stable. All right, and the, th and the good thing about it now is that this place offers hope in Christ. That's yeah. the true hope, and that's the true peace comes from. Absolutely. So um, one thing I love about the ministry is, uh, right, there's biker ministries, there's, there's all kinds of different ministries. And the ministry that uh, God just put on Pastor Perry's heart happened to be the homeless. And one of his uh, famous sayings is, you know, we, we throw him a sandwich instead of throwing him a Bible. And um, when we do... Um, uh, it, it, it does something to their heart like it would have when I was a kid, you know, because I wasn't, I didn't have uh, any kind of uh, Christian influence growing up. So that would have, that would have been huge, you know, being exposed to it. First, Pastor Barry would have gave me a bed, 
and then he would have said, it's time to go to church, Ken, you know. And, um, you know, how that would have changed my life at that time, because I didn't get saved until I was 27 years old. So uh, the Christian influence, um, the hope of Christ after the hope of survival, I think is key for the ministry. You know, it kind of softens your heart a little bit. It opens it up, you know, and, um, and I, I think it's just, I think it's amazing. It's just another avenue. There's a ton of ministries out there, but this one just so happens to be the one that, um, you know, God put on Pastor Barry's heart years ago. All right. Tell me a little bit uh, about the, how people can get involved and why should they get involved as far as financially. The, you know, the board um, is there. Also, the, um, no one gets a salary, right? That's right. Not even Pastor Barry. And, and someday, um, he, he's going to get something. I mean, sure. he, sh he should. He should. But right now, the, the ministry wouldn't survive. Um, so no one gets paid. Uh, we don't get stipends. Um, you know, there's no benefits. And that's okay, you know, because none of us are in it for any of that stuff. And um, the, uh, the ministry, 100% of the money that's donated, 100% um, is, is going to the ministry to help the homeless, 100%. We, we don't have any administrative costs. We don't, have, we don't have any of that overhead. It's food, lights, maintenance, insurances, or anything like that. It's 100% it, it's to help the homeless, 100. And, and, and someday, you know, there might be some administrative costs. Uh, you know, the ministry will get to the point where we'd have to pay, uh, you know, some people. But right now, it's all volunteer. And do you see the impact of people growing in Christ? Incredible. Um, Start out with some of the rewards I, I'm experiencing as, as part of the board, you know, as a chairman of the board, as I get to see whatever X. I'm sorry? Just started out with saying some of the benefit and rewards that I. Oh, hang on, the battery's about dead. Take back up here. Um, people, uh, basically, I'm trying to get people involved in, to know um, that. There's benefits to their investment. Yep. That they invest here. Uh, yep. You see it firsthand. Absolutely. So just tell me that. So, uh, so we got involved with the ministry um, very early on. Um, we uh, they had just started building the men's shelter uh, almost ten years ago, and um, they were they were in the middle of construction. And my family has a music ministry, so we came and uh, did a concert to raise money for them. Okay, keep looking at me. Okay. So we did a we did a concert. We you know raised some money, and um, and I didn't know what it was about, and I didn't see any of the benefits. But as as we continued to be involved in the ministry, one of the things that that blew me away was um, all of the salvations. I mean, I, there are, I, I, there are mega churches that don't see the type of salvations that walk through these doors. It's it it. it it truly is amazing. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds every single year. And I think what happens is, um, just like the little kid in the bus station, you know, they, you give them a little bit of hope. You, you, uh, you know, they, they get Christ, their hearts are open, they get saved, and then they themselves will go out and, and minister. And it's, it's incredible. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't see, there are a lot of churches in Maine that don't see a, a one or two salvations in an entire year, you know, we're seeing them on a regular basis. And, um, and that's just totally amazing, you know. But um, benefits of salvations, uh, but I, even in my own life, um, that my testimony has soared uh, being involved, just seeing all the miracles and, and all the stuff that God's doing through the ministry, um, my relationship with Pastor Barry, my relationship with the board, um, my family, you know, my wife says, uh, you know, when we started seeing all that was happening over here, she goes, we need, we need to be a part of that. You know, we need to, we need to do something. So when we first got involved, we, we did the concert, but uh, we started to give financially um, monthly to help them out. And then, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing. And now, now we're really involved, you know, as, uh, as the board and all that. So amazing, just amazing. So would you, uh, do you remember Mike, the guy that was here a while ago? Uh, the biker? Yeah. I, I don't know him. No, yeah, that's fine. I don't know him. I don't know if you know if you, got, if you could speak to him uh, about him or anything. So any, anything you want to add? I know it's uh, you love 
seeing people grow in Christ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they they're at the bottom when they come here, and then they 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 get better and they move on, and they get it's it's incredible, really. They get jobs, apartments, families, marriages, uh, unbelievable, really. When um, many times, you know, when you're at the bottom, um, without any kind of assistance, you know, without any, any even hope, um, it either ends up in that kind of lifestyle for the rest of your life or, or death, you know, and um, it, it's hard to get out of that. But, you know, when, when you go through a place like this, it, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's life. It's incredible. What is the one thing that's, how are people finding hope here? So, so I think first, you know, when you, when you give them a roof and you give them some food, I think that speaks to them somehow. I mean, the Bible says that, um, you know, uh, God's law is written on every man's heart. So I think, I think there's some good in everybody. I think they know. Uh, so that, that softens their heart a little bit. But I think um, that uh, just hearing the word, right, being in a, in a church environment um, and, and coming to studies, uh, you know, Pastor Barry and I have talked many times, there's a lot of, uh, people that come through, his, you know, come through our doors that they don't want to go to service, you know, or they're they're here begrudgingly and they just wanted the shelter part of it. Um, but just by hearing it, just by being there, you know, which I think uh, the Bible talks about also, is making a huge difference uh, spiritually in their lives. That's awesome. Yeah. Anything you want to add? No, I could go on for a long time. <laughs> I really can. I. Um, it, it, it's endless. I know, uh, I don't know how long I'll be a part of the board or if it'll be forever or, but I could tell you the only, the only reason um, that I'm, you know, that I'm doing this and the only reason I can do it is because of the other board members in Pastor Barry. It really, it, ca it can be laborious and it can be um, a lot of work and stressful, but man, I tell you, it's like, it's like just hanging out with those guys on weekends and, and during the week and, uh, you know, and emailing them back and forth. And I mean, it's, and we're, we're all on the same page, you know, and we're all one purpose. It's really, it's really amazing to watch. And I don't know if it'll end or when, but um, right now it's, it's amazing. It, it is, it's a privilege, really, to be involved. It really is. Yeah. Someone's watching this video and they, how, why should they get involved? Financially, perfectly, perfectly, whatever. Why should they support the ministry? So, um, one of our, our purposes here um, in in this world uh, is, you know, to um, to spread the news, you know, to spread the gospel, to um, save souls. So, whether it's uh, giving financially, whether it's praying, whether it's uh, giving even physical stuff, we have a, a needs page on our website of if they want to give toilet paper. Or, paper towels, we still have to buy some of that stuff. So um, it, it's saving souls, a, a lot of souls, you know, so, um, and these people, it, it might be their only opportunity, you know, to hear about Christ. So anything they give, you know, is, is just going towards salvations. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Anything else? One last shot. I don't know. I can't think of anything. I mean, it's, like I said, it's endless. I could talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> okay, one last thing. And yeah. it's once, once they come to Christ, they're required, and they come through the program, they, they're required to get plugged in and to follow Christ, Bible studies, praise and worship, attend Bible studies. Every correct. Day. There's stuff that they have to do every day in order to make the requirements to stay here. That's correct. Briefly, with passion, explain that. So, so if you want, need help. If you need help, you're going to go to every service. So start that over if you need help. Okay, so if you, if you need help, um, you come knock on our doors. I'm homeless. We, we don't ask. We don't ask questions. Um, we say yes. We hear the rules. Um, you go to every study, right? We also have a, um, a program for uh, addictions. So it doesn't matter what the addiction is, alcohol, drugs. Um, you got to attend those. Um, you got to be clean. And... Um, and you got to work. You got to work. So whatever that may be, shoveling someone's yard, you're doing dishes, you're cooking, whatever your talent is, whatever whatever we need. And if you can't do those 
three things. Um, and I always say it must not be that cold outside in Maine, right? So, so that's the part about the hearing the word is, it, is we hold services every single day and we have those addictions meeting, meetings all the time, so. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, a good, it's a good model, you know, because if I was homeless, if I was truly homeless, or when I was homeless, I'd be like, where do I sign up, right? Tell me where to sign up. That's it, that's all I have to do to be able to say, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it'll be 70 degrees in here. Awesome. And there's a background check for people for security. Yes, for not just for security. Um, a- yeah, we, we have a background check. Uh, we have them fill out an application. Uh, we require photo IDs, socials, and we run a background check because um, there may be a warrant uh, out for their arrest because um, we, we wouldn't know that. And the other thing is because we have families here, uh, we will not accept anyone that has a, a history of any kind of child, you know, related um, issues. Just briefly say that, we won't accept anybody here with child-related issues. So if they're a, a pedophile, um, they've been convicted uh, in the past of, uh, then, uh, yeah, then you can't stay here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I, I keep saying one last thing, but I think uh, the family issue is one deal that needs to be briefly just, it's a unique family. The, the whole family thing is very unique, uh, especially coming, you know, with my background as, as a child being homeless because um, homelessness in America, the programs, the federal and state programs, they separate the families. And I don't know, I don't understand quite the, the reason for it, but they separate the, the, the kids, they separate the husbands from the wives. And, um, and we're not going to do that. You know, the kids need their moms and dads. You know, that's part of the stability of, you know, their lives. So we're not going to separate them. You know. And so anybody want to help towards that? You're building a new unit, right? Or a unit. I'm sorry? Aren't you building a unit? For we're them? in the process. Uh, as a matter of fact, we literally just got the permits. And that, and that is not easy to do in small town America. But we got the permits. And um, we are gonna, we're getting ready to break ground. It's spring now, so the ground, the ground is thawing. So we're getting ready to break ground. We have uh, a company that's gonna donate the concrete, and we have churches literally all over the eastern seaboard that are waiting to start building. Um, and they're gonna bring teams of construction companies up to help us start build, which is blowing us away. I mean, we get calls all the time, emails. When are you guys gonna start? We're gonna bring up a crew and this and that, and uh, it's really, Unbelievable, but we're getting ready to build a family shelter because right now the shelter that we have uh, is for men and then the families, which we still keep together, they're in the church. So there's issues there too, but, um, but we're, we take everybody, you know, women, children, families, uh, and the single men, they go in the, um, the men's shelter. Why do you do that? I'm sorry? Why do you take families? Well, um... Because that's what Jesus would do. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can't, you can't split up a family. And, um, oh, I mean, you know, the, the shelters out there today, they don't take families. So, so we take them. You know, we want them. Bring them here. Bus them here. We'll pick them up. We'll pick them up. You know, we have, we have a, a couple of caravans, and, um, and we'll pick them up. And it doesn't matter where they are. You know, we'll pick them up and, uh, and bring them here. We want the families to stay together. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. God bless you. Big smile. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Got it. Thank you.